in this first installment of our special three-part series of the OECS YesI News. Students get to speak with political leaders and decision makers in some of the islands to gain insights into their plans for the islands. We start in Anguilla with Premier Dr. Ellis Webster. It's all happening right here, right now on the OECS YesI News. From what we have observed, being a member of parliament is no easy task and running a country is just as difficult. As students, we want to know what it is like being a politician and what are some of their plans for Angola. Honorable Premier Webster, we are excited to be in your presence today. It's great to have you all. Where do we begin? Your job is quite demanding. How do you strike a balance between work life and social life? What do you do to unwind? Well, the job is demanding, uh, but we do this for the people of Anguilla, so we have to make sure that we get the work done first. And then uh, my social life, you know, I have family here, so I tend to spend time with them. And also, um, I like to watch sports, and that's how I unwind. So once I get home, I turn the TV on, and that allows me to then uh, rewind what I did during the day to make sure that I've made the right um, decisions and then I can uh, make sure that I uh, relax. Thank you. You're welcome. Honorable Premier, what is the most difficult aspect of your job? Well, I would say trying to please everyone, but no, it's um, lack of finances to fulfill all the uh, promises and do the projects that we want to do. Uh, you know, certainly there are policies we want to put into place, uh, but if we can't fund them, then we can't do them. And uh, persons do expect that we try to do the things that we said we do. So that's the difficulty is having the finances to do it. Thank you. Good team, Honorable Premier. Angola by 2025, what do you envision it to be? Well, provided we don't have any more pandemics or hurricanes, natural disasters, I think that Anguilla will be in a good place. Uh, we'll be financially stable. There'll be projects going so we can provide jobs. We want to make opportunities uh, for young people and certainly want to care for the vulnerable among us and those who are elderly and those who are very young. So I do envision in 2025 that Anguilla will be a much better place than it is right now and we'll be able to keep um, students like you here in Anguilla rather than losing you to the outer world as soon as you graduate. Thank you. You're welcome. Honorable Premier, as a nation, as a people, we've been through several crises. The global financial depression, Hurricane Alma, and now COVID-19. How do you intend to address the mental health of the people to keep them motivated and in good spirits? Well, that's an excellent question. We do know those crises you mentioned have caused significant hardship. Uh, persons uh, out of money, uh, not able to interact with their families. Uh, it's just something that uh, the people have had, to, have had significant uh, problems with. Uh, we see the increase in domestic violence. We see uh, persons out of jobs. And uh, we have uh, provided uh, counseling uh, through the Ministry of Health and uh, we also try to do mentorship programs and uh, we've tried uh, to get people connected uh, via Zoom and other uh, virtual platforms uh, but I think the, to keep the people uh, keep their spirits up and motivated we have to make sure that we have an economy that works for the people diversify the economy so that in this time fishing and farming we can improve on those so it provides avenues uh, for uh, finance for work and we also have to make sure that uh, when people interact that they know that uh, brighter days are ahead uh, so as uh, projects come into the country investors come in uh, we want to make sure that uh, people understand that uh, that is the way that the economy will improve and i think uh, once people are working and they know that they can take care of themselves and their families and then they have a better uh, feeling about themselves. And I, I think that is uh, where we are headed. Uh, so we want to provide the avenues uh, for persons 
uh, to be able to, if they have issues, that they can talk to someone. And that is provided right now, um, certainly um, if they have medical issues and they see their uh, physicians, and if it's a counseling issue, and then they'll see uh, one of our counselors that can help. Thank you, Mr. Premier, for taking the time out to speak with us today. It was my pleasure. Thank you all. And again, it's good to know that young people like you are involved in the process. Wishing you all the best. It's clear that the diverse backgrounds, interests, knowledge, and expertise of our parliamentarians place Anguilla on a path to sustainable national development, where the voice of the youth is respected and duly considered. On this note of hope, I am Josara Hughes, reporting from the Valley Anguilla.